Maganda Arau, Mangatao. This is problem 20 from uh, Charles Van den Einen's number theory textbook. Um, and it's on, from the section on um, the Mobius inversion formula. Okay, and I'm going to give you an example of what motivated the solution here. It's a fairly, I would call it, ele, I would call it elementary. Um, now, we're supposed to show that mu of n plus mu of n plus 1 is equal to 0. Uh, see if you can, not, not all the time, but see if you can find an infinite number of solutions to this. An infinite number of natural numbers, natural numbers being positive integers, that satisfy this. And I did a lot of discovery on this with odd numbers, and I realized you should just work with the infinitude of the primes. There's an infinite number of primes, and so that makes the most sense. Now let's take a look. Uh, notice that this is equal to, this is just a numerical example to motivate the, the general solution. This is equal to 0 plus 0. And that's simply because uh, 3 squared divides 9, and that's trivial. Okay. And uh, that's this part right here. You see, this function returns 0 if the input is divisible by s the square of some prime integer, right? So this is trivial. Now, this part right here, you need to observe that 2 squared is uh, a prime squared, and it divides 8, right? So for these two reasons, appealing to the second part of this trivalent definition, we get that mu of 9 plus mu of 8 is equal to 0 plus 0, okay? So what, what does that make you think of? Well, it, it, is it true that it, every time you square a prime and then subtract 1 and then take the, the take mu of those values and the, then the sum, do you get 0? Well, let's check it out. Let's see if we can prove that. Now, you know, this is kind of the wordy, it's, it, it's, it's clumsier than it looks. Uh, basically, if you're the product of distinct primes, if you're an integer that's the product of distinct primes, you have to be square free, meaning you don't have any square divisors. Otherwise, there would be two indistinct primes in the factorization. So you see, these are the only two conditions, really. Of course, you have to define it for one by convention. It's equal to one. But these are the only two conditions for any natural number, which is kind of fascinating to me. It's, it's obvious once you look at it, but it's not something I would have discovered independently. All right. And again, P, and these, these are just distinct primes, and the, the uh, exponent is determined by the number of these distinct primes. But for this problem, we essentially just have to deal with this piece because you see zero and you want it to be zero, right? So it's natural to lean heavy on the second part of the trivalent definition. Okay, and as I said earlier, our proof is naturally motivated by the fact that there's an infinite number of prime numbers, and that's easy. That's fairly easy to prove. In fact, you, you suppose there's, you consider one more than this product and you get a natural contradiction if there's, if there's only a finite number. Okay. Now, again, um, this is a, another example right here. Uh, this would also be equal to zero. Okay. And you guys can verify that if you want, but this would be mu at 48. And this is, this is not quite like the example. I'm sorry. Uh, or is it? Um, it's similar, but Notice right here that this would be 48. 7 squared minus 1 is 48, and 4 divides 48. 4 is being 2 squared, right? 4 divides 48. And, of course, you, you chose the path of primes because it's, it's, it's just simple. There's an infinite number, of them, and, of course, this is equal to 0. So both of these add up to 0. This is 0 plus 0, right? Notice 7 is prime, though. 7 is prime. We're getting mileage out of the prime. We want an odd number that is also a prime number, but it does work as we've seen for k equals 1 uh, also when, when, when you're dealing with, with an even prime. Okay. Now, again, as before, this is something, uh, this is just a square, so it's going to be equal to 0. Color-coded for your convenience, right? And then this part right here, we, we quickly get that 4 divides the quantity of 4K squared plus 4K, right? And let me, let me write that down parenthetically. Okay, let me, let me envelop that in parentheses. And, you know, by the way, this is also not, this is divisible by 8 since it's, there's two consecutive integers going on here. So this is also, you can say more, it's also divisible by 8, which is another proof. You can say that, 
any odd integer squared minus one is divisible by eight, or eight, uh, an odd number squared is congruent to one modulo eight is another side note on that, okay? So you see, that, that gets the job done. Uh, you know, uh, everything in sight, uh, okay, four divides k squared, that implies this is equal to zero plus zero, right? This is one of these proofs that the super smart people will just say it's fairly obvious and they don't want to go to the trouble to prove it, you know. But this is trivially mu at any prime square is, uh, mu at any square, in fact, is, is equal to zero because if, if you're a regular perfect square, then some prime square has to divide you, okay. So, but again, we I did it this way just because we already know there's an infinite number of primes, all right. And so, blah, 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 this is equal to zero, right. And so really this completes the proof because if you take right here, if you take n to equal to uh, 2k plus 1 quantity squared, minus uh, 1, right? Okay. If you take n to equal to that, then th th that's going to be a solution to this, right? Because n plus 1 is just this, right? So n is equal to 2k plus 1 quantity squared minus 1, and then the rest of it follows from, from our earlier work. And since there are an infinite number of, uh, of uh, primes, there's an infinite number of prime squares. And that completes the proof, folks. So uh, we'll say QED here. And again, that's for this choice of M. And let me just write it out here just, just so it all be one square. 2K plus 1 prime. Now, there's a way to do this with odd numbers, but it's a slightly, it's a little more work just with odd numbers. You have to go through some cases, I think, kind of. Uh, it works out nicely. That's the way I did it at first. But this is easier, believe it or not, than the odd number way. And you guys check it out yourself if you don't believe me. But anyway, so uh, we have uh, QED. Or, well, or we just... I don't know if you want to call it QD, but we've shown that there's an infinite number of solutions. Any any prime n of this form will generate a solution to this equation. So that that's uh, that completes the proof. Okay, thanks for viewing.